back in the 80s, the Faroes were a rich nation with a booming economy. Loans secure the construction of a complex road, tunnel and bridge system. They've hit the hard times now and the loans need to be paid back. Fishing's the largest contributor to the coffers, but fish stocks are now dwindling. And so for a country also known as the land of the sheep, there's a lot to think about as it faces the future. The managers of the Toftier National Stadium have established an unusual way to finance the high cost of maintaining the complex. Within the clubhouse walls, it's opened up a bed and breakfast, which caters for up to 30 people in a sleeping bag hall. Or, more comfortably, in one of the 11 double rooms at the front of the stadium. For real luxury and the ultimate football bedroom, the penthouse suite can be hired with views of the pitch and all the local conveniences within easy reach. Out on the pitch itself, the Russians had arrived and were testing the swirling winds that whip across the biggest fjord in the Faroe Islands. The team was at near full strength with Kiryakov, a rejuvenated Kanchelskis, and Amari Tadtradze, the only member of the national squad from Spartak Vladikavkaz, who were running away with the Russian League Championship this year. For the Pharaohs, the sight of top-of-the-table Russia must have been intimidating from their position, second from the bottom. And so, to match day. As the Pharaohs entered the second half, they were drawing one all with their powerful opponents, a dream about to become even more fantastic. The optimists in the crowd were ecstatic for the moment, but there was plenty of time left. score 5-2 but the Faroes had become the first team to score twice against Russia in the qualifiers even so for the man without the bobble hat it was disappointing I feel bad we gave him a goal to make it 3-2 and then losing the match like that I'm not very pleased basically the stronger team always punishes the weaker one and it was a long time for us to hang on half an hour is a long time People look very conservatively at a goalkeeper and if I want to go abroad I feel I have to give up the hat. I don't want people to say at the end of my career that it was the hat that made me successful.